Hello everyone and welcome to the Maniacal Mini. Today I'm working on a commission for a customer who chose this awesome color scheme for his OC Archbone Reapers and today I'm going to show you how to paint it. I'm starting off with the model primed black. Since we are going to bring this to a high grim dark standard, I'm going off with a darker prime to keep certain colors more muted and dark. Starting out with Nagaroth Knight from Games Workshop, just remember to keep your paint nice and thin so that it achieves a nice uniform look after a few coats. All right, so we are going to move into a 50-50 mix of Nagaroth Knight and Gene Steeler Purple, another paint from Games Workshop. We have added a touch of water to keep it nice and thin, and we're going to be working up a quick highlight on the cloak. The key to this is since the front portion of the cloak doesn't have as much area as hitting the light until further down, is to start your brush stroke at the top of the cloak and work the paint down to deposit it at the areas of most highlight. As you can see, I'm just using the very tip of my brush to add very faint sketch lines to build up texture and transition. And after building up a few passes of that mix, making sure to leave just a little bit of the previous layer showing as it moved towards the shadows, we're going to do the same thing with Gene Steeler Purple. Again, keeping the paint thin and moving your brush strokes towards the areas with the most highlights, trying your best to use the tip of your brush and moving in a sketch style to keep the texture. This will be the final step on the cloak. As we move into Act 2, we are going to start painting all of the bone now. And since we started off with a black base, it's going to be much easier achieving the dark tone of the bones that my client is looking for. So I'm grabbing some Dryad Bark that I'm going to be using as a base color on all the bones on the model. We're going to be doing two coats of this color, so keep it thin and easily workable so as not to clog up any details. I'm going to be taking some Nuln Oil Wash from Games Workshop, and we're just going to coat all of the bones that we just painted with Dryad Bark. This is going to help us reestablish our shadow areas, as well as tone down that Dryad Bark. And we're going to be very careful as we move into highlight steps that we don't let any paint run into the recesses so that everything looks uniform. All right, moving into some of these highlights now, we're going to be taking some of that Dryad Bark that we used for our base, and we're going to mix that down 50-50 with Steel Lesion Drab, also from Games Workshop. Again, we're gonna mix in a, just a touch of water to thin it to almost a glaze consistency, just like we did in the cloak in our previous step. We'll be starting our brush strokes on the bigger or flatter portions of the bone, moving from the shadow area, and moving up to deposit the paint in the areas of most highlight. We're going to achieve a very realistic look by using that glaze to build multiple layers, leaving just a bit of the previous layer showing. Uh, 
Act 3 will bring us into the armor and metal portions of the paint scheme. The customer had requested a red armor instead of the traditional color, which I think is going to work perfectly with the other colors that we have put down, as well as more that we will lay down in more steps later on. Other aspects of the scheme as well. In grabbing some Caesar Red Metallic from Green Stuff World to act as the undercoat for the first part of the red look, this color definitely needs two coats to get a nice, even, opaque look though. So take your time and enjoy the process. So, the reason that we needed to make sure that that metallic was nice and even with multiple coats is because once we do this step here, we will need to completely redo the entire process if we mess it up. So, we are going to take a little bit of Flesh Terror Red contrast paint from Games Workshop, and I'm going to lay this down nice and evenly over the Caesar Red to avoid streaking that can happen with some contrast paints. And as you can see, the result is a very bright red that we will tone down a little bit later. I added this part in here to let you all know that everybody makes mistakes and if you do it is very easy to fix. Just take some of the older colors that you were using on that portion and just tidy up the area. So for instance right here I'm grabbing my previous bone color and I'm just going to re-establish those tithes around his neck and make it look a little bit more even. The next metallic color I'm going to be using is Black Metal from Scale 75. This will also be another quick two coats along the handle of his axe, and also picking out any of the links holding up the cloak and bone ties. All right, so as we move into our final metallic for this scheme, we're going to grab some old copper from scale 75. This is going to add a very nice focal point, but it also fits in very nicely with the rest of the scheme. As we lay this down, this will be our wrap up for our metallic section, and I will see you in the next act. All right, moving into Act 4 now, and we're working out all those final details before we move into weathering. So I'm starting out with the stone floor, as well as the blocks on his base, and for that I'm going to be using Basilicanum Gray Contrast Paint. This is going to help add a lot of contrast to his base as we move into later steps. While I let that contrast paint dry, I'm going to take this time to pick out the front and back gem on the axe with Nuclear White from Green Stuff World. This is going to help us establish and ultimately sell the look of the gem.
Before we continue, I'm going to take this opportunity to clean the little rim around the gem with some old copper. Now that we've cleaned up that area, I'm going to be putting down two coats of Phoenix Orange ink from Green Stuff World over the gem. We're going to remember to let these completely dry before we add our subsequent passes. And while we wait for that ink to dry, I might as well hop back over to the base. So what I'm going to do is grab some of that Flesh Terror Red Contrast paint that we were using earlier. And I'm going to be putting that over the little handle on the sword on the base. In an effort to use as little varying paint as possible, I'm going to be bringing back in old copper from scale 75. This is going to be around the area of the handle, um, so just that little blade stop, as well as the little handle piece on the bottom. And again, bringing back in some of that old metallic, we are going to do the blade of the sword in black metal. You don't need to be concerned if you get some of the metal on the sand since we're going to cover that up, but make sure you take care around any of the stonework. Okay, to add a little bit more realism to this base, I'm going to be grabbing some desert sand di diorama texture from AK Interactive, and I'm going to use that to go over any of the sand that's on the base instead of actually painting it. AK Interactive has an amazing selection of products like this, and I definitely recommend them for any weathering or basing needs. Another texture product that I'm going to be using is Sandy Desert from AK Interactive. This one has a much lighter color in the sand, and it's going to be great to add over the areas of desert sand that we already put down to represent fresh sands blowing in. And this will be the final touch on the base for now. All right, now that that is done, it is time to bring back in our Phoenix Orange ink for one more pass over that gem on the axe. This time, though, I'm going to be using a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. I'm going to be grabbing some ink intensity white from scale 75, and since this is a pretty thin white, almost like a glaze, we're going to be using it as a glaze for the center of the gem so that we can build up the color. And for the final step of this act, I grabbed some Amber Orange Candy Ink from Green Stuff World. This is kind of a glossy ink 
um, so when you put it down, it'll mimic the shine of a gem when you put it over it, uh, which is really, really awesome. So I'm going to be putting that down, letting it dry, adding another layer if I need to, but I probably won't do more than two just because we don't want it to look too ridiculous once we start weathering later. Um, so that's gonna be the end of this act. I will see you in the next one. So we are moving into our final act now and we're gonna be focusing on weathering from here on out. As you can see, I'm coating the entire model very liberally with this streak and grime from AK Interactive. We're gonna be using this to tone down the colors and add our first layer of dirt to the model. All right, so now that that streaking grime has had a chance to dry for a bit, we're gonna be using a reductive technique with some Q-tips and mineral spirits, and we're gonna to start to work that streaking grime back off of the model. Being careful of how much pressure we're using, we don't wanna rub off anything that we've laid down in previous steps. For our second enamel, I've grabbed some dirt and dust deposits from AK Interactive. For this, I'm going to be doing the entirety of the cloak, as well as the stones on the base. This is going to add a obvious dusty and dirty look once we're finished with it. Um, we will clean it up in another step, so I'll leave you guys here to hang out. Grabbing a Q-tip with some more mineral spirits, we're going to use less mineral spirits than we did on our Q-tip to clean off the streaking grime, but we're going to be doing the same type of reductive technique. We're going to be stopping a little bit up from the bottom of the cloak so we can leave that dust and dirt and grime to collect around the bottom of it. For our last enamel, we are going to be using some rust streaks from AK Interactive. This is going to be only on the handle of the axe, as well as the blade of the sword on the base. This time we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. I have not put any mineral spirits on this Q-tip. I am just going to be lightly feathering it off with a dry Q-tip just to leave the rust in the recesses and leaving an almost stained look on the entirety of the metal in the process. I'm going to be using some Abtalung 502 turquoise lights oil paint. I have thinned this down with a little bit of mineral spirits just to get it to almost a wash consistency to make it a little bit easier to work with. What we're going to be doing is using this to dot the rivets and the paneling on the red armor as well as dropping some into the recesses of the copper areas.
Since oil paints are so forgiving, you can clean up any of the areas that got some overspill of that turquoise lights just to clean it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more neater, and you can actually use that Q-tip to kind of streak those turquoise lights down to actually look like it's pulling away from the armor and giving it a nice natural look. The next step I'm going to be doing is to grab some Desert Dust Pigment Powder from Vallejo and we're just going to use a dry brush to dry brush this all over his base, over his feet, the bottom of the cloak to enhance that dust that we had laid down with the deposits and anywhere else that we think would look pretty cool. One of the final things that we're going to be doing on this model is setting up this OSL glow on the axe blade. To start off, I'm going to be using some Badger Steinal Res White Primer through the airbrush, working very lightly, and with something to block the model from overspray, with this piece of paper in the back, we're going to go from ultra bright at the tips and have it fade out as it goes towards the center of the blade. I'm going to be grabbing some of that Phoenix Orange from earlier, but now we're going to be using it through the airbrush as the base of our glow. I'm now taking the nuclear white from Green Stuff World that we've used, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of edge highlighting around the area of our OSL. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting from the very tip, or as you can see, I'm keeping the edge highlights just a little bit away from where that fade out starts, um, just to add that realistic, like it kind of is fading out as it goes towards the center of the blade. With that edge highlight done, this is going to set up perfectly to glaze some of this orange neon floor paint from scale 75 over the entire axe blade. Um, this is going to enhance our original color, which is that orange, and it's also going to hit off of those white edge highlights, making them really pop with a nice glow. The final step that I'm going to be doing in this tutorial is grabbing some Steel Lesion Drab for the rim of the base. This will help tie everything together very nicely. I want to thank you guys very much for checking out this video. We have a very large selection now as it continues to grow. I'm trying to put out more videos more often. Um, hopefully it continues in the trend that it's working in now where I can put out one hopefully every week or every two weeks. but. Please be patient. Um, I'm trying my best to get as many out as I can. This is what I absolutely love doing, so I'm trying to do as much, spend as much time as I can doing it. 
and this will help me improve as well as giving you guys a nice big library to look at. So if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please consider subscribing. Every subscriber helps. Um, check us out on Patreon. We're still building up the library for that, and we will see you in the next one.